Hello people, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on where you are from. I would like to thank God for this uh, opportunity. My name is Pastor Chidi Shakine and I want to thank God for this opportunity to, to bring this word to us. Is actually a warning. Is actually a warning. I won't say a warning to to the church in general, because God knows His own people. But I want to say a warning to false prophets and false teachers. A warning to false prophets and false teachers. I want us to go to the word of God before I begin to share a few things that God would have me say. If you have your Bible very close to you there, I want us to look, look into the word of God together. I want us to look at 2 Peter chapter 2. I want to read from verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2 from verse 1. And I read. Because I can't, whatever I'm going to say right now, I can't present it better than what is already in the Bible. I can't present it better than what is already written. Okay? He said, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there were, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, mm. even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them bringing swift destruction on themselves many will follow their depraved depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth ah, into disrepute you see what is going to be happening here Many will follow their depraved conduct. And as a result of that, they will bring the way of truth into disrepute. People will no longer have regard for the truth. People will disdain the truth. People will slight the truth because of their destructive heresies and because of of their depraved conduct. Verse 3. In their greed. These teachers. Will exploit you. With fabricated stories. I mean. I cannot put it better. Than this. What else do I have to say? I can't put it better than this. Fabricated stories. Hmm. Their condemnation has been hanging over them. And their destruction has not been sleeping. Hmm. Then he went on to say, But if God did not spare angels, when they sinned, they sent them to hell putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world, so there was a world during the time of Noah, when he brought the flood on his ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If he, 
he condemned cities of Sodom and Gomorrah mm. by burning them to ashes and made them an example. Make them an example. God have mercy. And make them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. <laughs> And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless. For that righteous man living among them, day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and had. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the ungodly from trials, to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. And I want to sound a note of warning. The day of judgment is coming. The day of judgment. God knows how to rescue the righteous and bring judgment. <laughs> Bring judgment to the wicked. God, we are living in the days of error, the age of error. The age of error. If you're not concerned about what is going on right now in our society, especially in the church, the Bible says some will secretly introduce destructive heresies. We're not even talking about all kinds of teachings and heretic teachings that are flying all over the place. Now, this is what I told people. How do you know doctrine, doctrines of the devil? Before I go into that, let's look at another passage of Scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. He said this, also know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The word peril means fearful time shall come. We are living in a very fearful time. Fearful time shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Amen. I can't say it better than this. Men will be lovers of their own selves. They will be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, mm. fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We see all that on, on the social media because for me, social media is reflective of, is a revealer. Of the character of a people. Of the character of a society. So if you want to know what people looks like. What a society look at. What happens in their space. On the social media. We see all sort of that. Disobedient to parents. People coming out to accuse their parents. With that natural affection. We see people. Breaking. Accusing people falsely, false accusers. Mm. Despisers of all those that are good. When they see good people, they call them gullible and feeble and all manner of words. Unthankful, unholy, blasphemous. The only thing that sells right now in a society as reflected on the social media. Is anything that is blasphemous. Write something that is noble. No, you won't get. It won't trend. But say something against God. Say something against the church. Say something against the Holy One. The social media carries it. It begins to trend. Many people understand this. That the best way to trend. Is to say something. Wrong. Because bad news sells faster. Especially if it's something that is against the normal norms. 
They say having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Everybody claims religion. But nobody has a true, very few people that have a sincere and a true relationship with God. But we, we all wear a form, the form of godliness, the form of religion. Then he described these people, he said, of this sort, they creep into the houses and lit captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with their diverse lusts. Diverse lusts. Let's look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. I just felt like reading the Bible throughout and not even saying anything. The age of error. The age of error. The age of error. God warns false prophets. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from faith. There's a massive departure from faith right now. There's a deliberate attack on faith right now. A subtle, secret, but yet forceful and conscious, deliberate attack on faith. Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall come, will there be found faith? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Doctrines. Doctrines. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. Which, is, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe. Praise God. I am bringing a note of warning. This is obvious that we are living in the age of error and God is warning false prophets and false teachers. False teachers, those who introduce heresies in church secretly. How do you know heresy? Any teaching that tells you that Christ, let me put it this way, that supplants Christ or supplement Christ is heretic. Can I say it again? Any teaching that supplants Christ, in other words, replaces Christ. Because Christ should be all in all. Nothing else but Christ. So any teaching that supplants Christ or supplements, add to Christ, that tells you that Christ is not enough, you need Jesus plus. Jesus plus anything at all. That the simple faith in Jesus Christ is not enough. That the simple faith in Christ is not enough to save you, but you have to add something to it for the salvation of your soul or any teaching that tends to remove Jesus completely from the picture and now makes the general overseer a mediator where the general overseer takes the place of God. Now, that people now pray in the name of general lover. We are asked to pray only in one name. And that's the name of Jesus. So any teaching that places a man above where the grace of God has placed him. Is a false teaching. I also fall victim to this sometimes. Also fall victim. I am not, sometimes I, I regard men even more than 
more than sometimes I regard them more than where grace has placed them. The Lord help us and also help me. Any teaching that makes a child of God less than who he is in Christ that tells you that you will have to go through another man to get to God, to get to Christ before your prayers will be answered. That until you pray in the name of the God of that man or God of that woman, that answers will not come. Is a false teaching. Because what is happening is that that man is actually subtly taking the place of God. Any teaching that makes a man seems faultless. Faultless. Untouchable. Unreachable. Any teaching that makes a man appear as though he is faultless is a wrong teaching. Is a false doctrine. And we live in days where false doctrine, destructive doctrine, the Bible calls it, have been introduced into the body of Christ. What do we say about the activities of prophets? So-called prophets. People who God have not sent. People who tell you that God said when God have not said anything. People who say to you, can I prophesy when there was no word given to them to prophesy. People who make merchandise of men by giving them false prophecies. Giving them prophetic words. Lying to them in the name of the Lord. And staging false prophecies. Staging false prophecies. Prophecies are staged these days in church. If I pay you, I can tell you anything and you tell me, go on, go deeper, prophet. You can tell me because I'm paying you for that. Staging false deliverance. Staging false testimonies. Staging false charity. False charity. Staging false charity. Just come and stand. Let's just take picture. Let's say, now, tell them that I gave you people money. At the end of the day, I will give you 20, 20,000. But what is there is that I gave you people 20 million. Is a game. A whole lot of things are happening. There's a whole lot of false preachers and false teachers. False teachers and false preachers. And God is bringing warning. What I saw in the realm of the spirit. What I saw in the realm of the spirit is a judgment. And what I saw is an insurrection, kind of. A, a mass, uh, how do I put it? A kind of a mob action against some false churches and some false, false churches and false prophets. There's like a societal aggression. And God said he is the one that will stir it up naturally. He will stir it up. And there is already this, this stirring is already going up. Going. Going on. So this is a warning to anybody who is doing anything evil. Thinking that you, he is untouchable. The Lord said I should let you know that Every iniquity must be judged. There was a time in this country. Because when the Lord was explaining this to me. 
he gave me two, two options. He said there was a time in this country when crime was everywhere, especially in the southeast. People cannot even walk on the street anymore. Places like, I don't want to stop mentioning names. And all of a sudden, some people felt they are untouchable. They called themselves hard man. On a broad daylight, people are being intimidated and extorted. But there was an aggression that rose up against them. And it was very bloody. There was also another time in this country where a similar thing happened. A set of people felt that they can do anything because they are backed up by the state. And before you know, there was a rise. There was a rise. There was a rise. When God told me this thing was many years ago, even before I saw, before it, it was becoming clearer to me, before, I'm beginning, before I start seeing the possibility of such a thing happening, there was no, as at the time I saw it, there was no possible. People were like, what is going on? A lot of people don't even understand. But now, people are beginning to see the possibility of such a thing rising. I see an insurrection against falsehood in any form, in any shape, be it in form of a church, be it in form of prophets, I see an insurrection. I see an insurrection. It was like a massive mob action. And many false prophets did not make it. Some people died in the process. It is a warning. Iniquity must be judged. Time will not permit me to begin to go into several revelations that I've seen with regards to this. The last one that I saw was I was in the realm of the spirit. And I was crying. I was doing a kind of a prayer walk. And all I was crying out was God have mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. I was doing a prayer walk. But in that prayer walk I was walking on my knees. Crying on the street. From I, I, I walked on my knees. For kilometers. Anybody who knows me, I've been to your church to preach, will know that I've said this in your church. That what is coming, I don't know what it is, but it will not be very palatable. It will not be sweet. There's a judgment coming. If you know you are not called into the body of Christ, you are not called. You are one of the so-called charlatans that is messing up things in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit said, I should warn you that your time is up. This is the last warning for you. People with destructive, oh my God, heresies and depraved conducts. The Bible can't explain it better. I don't have a better word for it. Destructive heresies and depraved, depraved conduct. As a result of that, making, slighting the way of truth. And making the way of truth of no repute. Making people to look down on God and the church, the true church of Jesus Christ. And his real called Pastors, his real called servants, you know yourselves. Making some people to generalize and say everybody's like that, you know, you the troublemaker. Will God not judge you? 
will God not judge you? Don't think that the grace that God is giving you, that God is giving you, He's giving you enough grace. He's giving you enough grace. He's calling you out. Let me conclude like this. You know, I once told you people that are backslidden. At some point in my Christian work, I gave my life to Christ at a tender age. All right. When I started growing up, I felt I needed to experiment some things. I backslid. I had a setback in my faith. And after I came back, I came back for a whole year. I didn't, I didn't come into the church. And can I even say to you that I did not backslide as a baby Christian. Or let me say, I was a baby Christian because if I knew what I had known in the Lord, I wouldn't have backslid it. Yes, but I felt that it was as a result of the forces I collided with in the church that made me to give up. For a whole year, if not a year plus, I didn't step my leg into the church. There was a whole lot of development I didn't know. When I returned back again in faith, that was the era of prophet, prophesy, and all kinds of things. I was amazed. I began to blame myself. I said, God, look at what I did to myself. Assuming I was, I was, I was committed to you. This wave of prophetic grace and prophetic revival will not pass me by. That was the new when these things were still when this prophet prophesied thing was still coming up. And the Lord, as at that time, the Lord said to me clearly, Son, don't go their way. I have not called them. They called themselves. I did not give them a word, but they ran with it. They ran with their own word. And he told me, he said, every one of them, every one of them will have something in common. They will not fulfill the number of their days. And since that time, I have seen the word of God fulfilled. God is true. Many have died out of unexplainable reasons and cases. Many have died shameful deaths. I am not here to slight anybody, but you know yourself. The judgment of God is coming. The judgment of God is coming. And it will not be very sweet. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. If you are called of the Lord and the world is lighting you and people you're under pressure to do the wrong thing, don't. Because there is a judgment coming on iniquity. Stick to God and don't just be good. Let people know you as good. Don't just, don't just say God sees my heart. God knows I'm not like anyone. Let people know you stand for the truth in words, in action, and in everything you stand for. Because judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. Pastor Chiri Shekina, God bless you.